Hello and welcome back to this Downfall Idealistic Crusade. Continuing in my series on the Avon Phantom novels in the reprints by Hermes Press, I wanted to talk a little bit about book number seven, The Mystery of the Seahorse. Now, like the other books, these are all based on uh, parts of the, the long-running Phantom newspaper strip, but uh, most of the books were ghost-written by various writers, and the most of these were written by the author going under the pen name of Frank S. Sean, which was actually the pen name of Ron Goulart. So this is another that Goulart wrote under the Sean on pin name and uh it, it's you you can definitely tell when you're reading these in order as i talked about in my my video on mysterious ambassador which is book six this was written uh by creator of the character in series lee falk who also wrote book one and wrote uh, at least two others of the 15 avon novels and you, you can tell a difference because there is a bit of a come down uh, after reading uh, Mysterious Ambassador going into Mystery of the Seahorse, which is once again much more of a straightforward adventure. And it actually gets started by Diana Palmer, the longtime love interest of the Phantom, sort of falling into evil hands unintentionally and getting involved in a criminal enterprise and then getting away and being captured several times and the Phantom becoming involved. And uh, it, of course, goes from there. But uh, there are a couple books in this series, and, and you're going to run in that, into that sort of story setup in any sort of classic adventure t series that's long running, where you have the, the longtime love interest uh, who is going to get into peril somewhere at some time. It's just going to happen. But as I sort of mentioned when I talked about Mysterious Ambassador, uh, there is a difference between uh, reading the books written by Lee Falk and the books written by others, because in the others you do have to kind of read a bit more into the descriptions because the characters aren't quite as nuanced because it's another writer compared to the writer of and creator of the characters and series itself, um, which I think accounts for most of that difference. So this is is like the other uh, books that Goulart has written in the series so far that I've read. It's, it's much more of a straightforward adventure. It's very fast moving. It's still got a relatively short page count. So like all of these books, you can read them in one sitting. And then the trick is to not let yourself read it too quickly so you can enjoy the, the, the adventure. Uh, but but this one it it felt a little bit on the simpler side if I'm honest uh, the individual that Diana winds up being uh, menaced by is this uh, seemingly uh, rich individual with a yacht and of course then it's revealed that he may have links to an escaped war criminal and uh, then the, the, the plot unfolds further that perhaps he is a smuggler as well and is, of course, obviously up to no good. Uh, but uh, honestly, it, it, the way it's laid out here, and I don't know if it's because it, it, it's translating a story directly from an original newspaper strip, which is, of course, designed for uh, comic panels in newspaper serial storytelling. Uh, so I don't know if the original story was maybe a bit more straightforward than some of the others, which didn't help it translate to novel form as well. But of the books so far, this one, I think, was was the most uh, to the point and and on the simple side. So I think this one may actually be the I hate to say the weakest of the ones so far. It's still a fun read. But the stakes never feel as high as some of the others, particularly, again, coming after the last one, where it's a whole country under siege being held uh, under military dictatorship after a coup attempt. So uh, there's a bit, bit of a difference in intensity in terms of the, the plot stakes going on. Um, but Mystery of the Seahorse is still a fun book, and it does have some some nice uh bits and inferences and uh being a bond fan i can't help but you know when you have a sort of villainous character on a yacht and menacing the the heroine of the story it i mean it it it's not the same but it, it sort of automatically makes my head think of the hildebrand rarity from uh fleming's for your eyes only short story collection where you have Bond on a yacht, witnessing the villain menacing the 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 the, the woman of the story. So I, I immediately flashed to that a little bit, and there's a little bit of almost a sort of feeling of uh, of a story about piracy because you have 
uh, skullduggery on the open seas and so on and so forth. But I, I think the most interesting aspect was the idea that, uh, you know, it, it, it is possible that the villain is actually an escaped uh, Nazi war criminal. Uh, that was the most interesting thing in the book and it's it's discussed rather quickly in uh, in terms of uh, it it comes out pretty early in the story it's not like a a last minute reveal and so as soon as that's suggested it's like oh well that's that's somehow got to be who this guy is and why he's so secretive and uh he it immediately makes the imagination wheels start turning in the head and that that for me was the most interesting thing in the book. Uh, otherwise, I think this is the most straightforward of of the Avon Phantom adventures so far in terms of it doesn't have as much of the humor and the uh, fun bits of character. It's it's much more of a straightforward adventure, and uh, it also felt a little abrupt at the ending, as some of these do, because uh, as soon as we basically get to the finale. That's that's pretty much it because these are these are short books. They are straightforward adventures still, but this one the, the the whole climax kind of felt a little bit abrupt. But I think that was also because the story itself was was the most straightforward of reading these today uh, so far. So um, this one's probably my least favorite so far, but it's still a wonderfully fun adventure. So here is the Hermes Press reprint, uh, reproducing the beautiful original George Wilson artwork, which is extraordinarily bold. This is of course resized from the original Avon paperback novel from the original 1970s printing. Uh, these are all nicely done. I feel like a broken record saying the the same this but uh, they are all in a matching style they make a, a nice matching rear cover with the artwork copied over and then simple but matching spines so they all go together on the shelf they feel very nice in the hands uh, even though it's a short novel it was originally a paperback and it's been expanded to a larger form the 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 text layout and everything is just very nice easy to read and uh, they, they have a nice premium feeling because they are bigger. Um, it, it just it's it's a really nicely done um, a nicely done edition, and I really like the style uh, across all of these being uniform. So it does again make them feel much more like a series. Uh, the original editions, which I have one behind me, uh, of course these are much smaller. They were '70s adventure paperbacks, uh, but they were never reprinted before this. So. The originals are quite uncommon. You do have to pay a decent amount for them, and trying to complete a whole set is rather expensive. So these rather affordable reprints, I think, are a really nice option if you're interested in reading the novel version of The Exploits of the Phantom. Uh, And I think it's wonderful being able to read The Ghost Who Walks translated into book form, because if you're like me, I, I always enjoy reading classic hero characters in book form because I I like the additional story material that you can get into a book uh, versus being only limited to a certain number of comic book panels or in the Phantom's case newspaper strip panels. So I I think this is a a really important and fascinating part of the character's history and I'm so happy that Hermes Press did uh, the entire series in reprint form. So those are my thoughts on the Hermes Press reprint of The Mystery of the Seahorse. While it's probably my least favorite of the Phantom novels so far. I I do like certain elements of it, and it's still a really fun adventure. Uh, Again, I think the most fascinating part is the villain being alluded to throughout the course of the story as perhaps being this escaped war criminal, uh, but people uh, not being able to reconcile that because the villain of this story has a seemingly ageless smile and a, and a very strange countenance and is far younger than this uh, war criminal would be. So, of course, it's you know, r- rather obvious how it might have been done, but that that sense of mystery about the true identity of the villain himself is, I think, the most alluring and interesting part of the story. I wish there had been a bit more done with that and they'd gone into that a bit more. Um, I also wish the the climax of the story was, was a bit more developed and involved because it, it, it kind of feels a, a bit like our, our, our heroes are sort of 
side characters in the last couple of minutes. Um, but I mean, it, it, it makes sense. It's just, it, it felt a bit more perfunctory as a climax, I guess, is the best way to put it, uh, especially when compared to some of the other books. But it's still a wonderfully fun adventure, and I think another essential book in this wonderful Avon Phantom series that Hermes has reprinted. So uh, if you're a fan of the character and you've never read these, or if you've never read the character at all and you're looking for a starting point, I think the Avon Phantom novels are are a great place to either have more fun uh, with the Phantom's adventures or uh, a great place for newcomers to start with the Ghost Who Walks, uh, especially reading them in order and starting with the first book that deals with the origin. Uh, this, again, I think perfectly distills all the great and legendary aspects of the character and helps to explain the character's uh, longevity for all these years and decades. So I will leave the link to this book on uh, Hermes's website, and I strongly encourage you order from them if you're interested and help support independent publishers by publishing directly from their website. Uh, I will continue doing these. I, I, I'm having so much fun reading these that, again, I, I felt the need to just basically do a video review for each book, even if they're just, you know, rather short and simple, uh, like like I've been doing with these. Uh, this has been a, a really wonderful chance to finally dig further into the Phantom lore and look at these Avon books that I had heard about for so many years, but just never gotten the chance to read the whole series. So with that, I'll just say, why not enjoy another journey to the deep woods and happy phantoming? <laughs>